Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Ripka Edit. I'm Heidi Ripka, and joining me is my friend and JTV host, Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Thank you so Heidi. much for joining me again. <laughs> oh, it's always my pleasure. I love chatting with you. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, well, of course. We had so much fun <laughs> last time. I was like, absolutely. Let's have Amy join us on the edit. Well, tonight, we have a very different kind of story. Last time you and I were together, we looked at a lot of semi-precious rings. Mm -hmm. Tonight, our theme is cardinal or cardinal gemstones. So we have an assortment, a lot of rings, but we have some earrings and some cuffs and a few other pieces. But I want to just quickly jump into cardinal gemstones. So I'm sure a lot of people maybe heard the term, but is not familiar with where it comes from and what it is. Mm -hmm. So cardinal gemstones, the term originates from ancient Greece, Rome, Egypt, Mesopotamia, where the gemstones were held, um, I'm actually reading just to be honest, were held ceremonially and historically for important occasions. Mm -hmm. They were named cardinal gemstones because of their use for royalty and religious figures. Today, we mostly know them as precious gemstones. So that family is, in, uh, consists of diamonds, rubies, sapphires, emeralds. And what's also interesting is amethyst used to be part of that family because it was more about rare gemstones. And many decades ago, they found a huge mine of amethyst in Brazil. And so that basically took away amethyst from being a rare gemstone. So right now, when we talk about precious gemstones, we're typically based, we're, we're typically focused on ruby, sapphire, emeralds, and diamonds. So today we're going to look at those stones with the exception of diamond, which we use Bella Luce for that. That's right. But we're going to look at lab created ruby, sapphire, and emerald styles. Um, they're some of my favorite stones. I'm always partial to emeralds personally, but sometimes I fall in love with the right shade of a blue sapphire, the right shade of a ruby. They could also really pique my interest. <laughs> and, and, and you know what I think, Heidi, isn't that the beauty of lab created, right? So you're optically, chemically, physically, it is the exact same. So it's like you're getting perfection in that gemstone but you're truly paying a fraction of the price in terms of if you're looking at apples to apples. And I've really moved that way in all my colored gemstones. So it's something that's kind of near and dear to my heart. And then I think in some of these pieces, when we kiss it with Bella Luce, which we know as being part of the JTV family for what, almost 28 years, what a fantastic look when we add that Bella in also. And then we take Judith's eye and Judith's creation. So you really get the best of both worlds in all of these pieces. It's true. And it's that, like you said, kiss of Bella Luce, that little sparkle, that glimmer that really enhances it. And, you know, you're talking about the beauty of Lab Created and how it's really enhances the stone. I was saying how emeralds are my favorite stones. However, emeralds tend to be heavily included. Right. And when you have a lot of those inclusions, they tend to look foggy. They, mm -hmm. it's, it would cost as much as a house you get a right. nice large emerald that doesn't have all those inclusions. That is the ideal shade. Same with mm -hmm. sapphires. I and mean, you're talking easily in the, you know, six digits for sure. When you're talking about how Judith Ripka typically uses such large scale stones. And if you want that really high quality, but with these lab created gemstones, it's a whole different story price wise. And I think you can wear them confidently too. You know, you can wear them confidently in the sense that, just to your point, good on you if you know you, if it is in the budget to buy something that really rivals the price of a house. But to have the opportunity to have the look, to optically, chemically, physically have a gemstone that's the same, but be paying a fraction of the price, being able to wear it confidently and with pride, but knowing it's a piece that you can wear and not be, you know, fearful to wear it, enjoy it in your everyday life. I think that's a gift too, Heidi. It is, and not having to worry about insuring it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so so we have lots of different styles, but the first style is something that was inspired by a couture ring that Judith made in the 80s. She did a lot of stack rings back then. And so this first ring we offer in 
six ways. We offer it in ruby, sapphire, and emeralds, but we also are offering it in sterling silver, as well as 14 karat gold clad. And just as a reminder, if you're new to the collection, uh, all of the Judith Ripka sterling silver is rhodium plated, meaning it'll protect your sterling silver from tarnishing. It keeps it nice and white and bright. It also means that if you wear it with your white golds, it'll match the color perfectly. So I'm just going to quickly show you, and I think Amy, you probably have these rings too. So this is the ruby. I have just one. And what, mm -hmm. You have just one? Okay, well then I'll show both. Okay. So <laughs> what's interesting that I always find interesting is how different stones come across when you set them in white gold versus clad. How I always tend to find that white gold gives it more of an estate look. And then the clad can tend to make it a look a little more contemporary in feel. So same stones, just a very different feel to it. So actually I'm, I'm gonna stack them up on my finger. So we have the ruby on top, we have the emeralds on bottom, both of them available, as I was saying, in silver as well as clad. And then this is the sapphire version. Now these are all square cut gemstones, lab created. They range from about 90 points for the emeralds and to a, a little over a carat for the lab created blue sapphire. But Amy, I'm sad to say that I found out just today that a lot of the pieces we're looking at are incredibly limited in size. That's why I have which, an 11. <laughs> That's why I'm I, holding I, it. And that's why I can't wear the blue sapphires because yeah. I think mine are 11 too. I was like, oh my gosh. But it's because people find them so versatile. So you could wear these as a wedding band. You could wear them as a stack ring. I frequently wear rings like this as guards as well. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's a perfect complement to so many rings that I own. So hi, Maya. Thanks for joining us this evening. Hi, I'm following along on Facebook if anyone wants to uh, chime in and say hi. But it's the Judith Ripka Facebook page. So again, what you were talking about in terms of the chemical composition and the perfection of these stones, you get that right shade of ruby, that right shade of emerald, and that right shade of blue sapphire. And so the ruby we have in the sterling silver, we have it left, well, let me pull this one out. So in the silver, in the ruby, it's available in size five, six, eight, nine, 10, and 11. So this one is one of the more readily available ones. It's only missing a size seven. However, the blue sapphire in silver is only available in a size five and a size 10. So if you're lucky size five or size 10, you can get the sterling silver with the blue sapphire. The emerald is also limited, not quite as limited though as the ruby. That's in five, six, eight, 10 and 11. And then in the clad, we have the ruby only in five, eight and 11, the sapphire in five, 10 and 11, and the emerald is only available in a size eight. So if you have your eye on any of these, and I, I said your size, do not wait <laughs> because they're selling out quickly. So and that's a nice thing, Amy. And this happened when you and I met a couple of weeks ago. We have found that people are so excited to have Judith Ripka on JTV that you'll notice limited inventory. A lot of them say one only left. Our product, our jewelry is selling quickly. So if you see something, I don't know if any of these are going to ever be reordered. So if you see something, you like it, you have, you know, you have it in your head that you're going to get it eventually. I suggest you don't wait too long because you might find yourself unable to get it. So that was the sizes for that one. The next ring we're going to look at, do you have the round gemstone ring? I do. Oh, good. You have all three of them like me? I have two, which tells <laughs> me that we're limited on these two. But Heidi, I was going to ask you as we move on to this one, don't you think with the band rings, even if it's, a, let's say you're a size between, can't you wear it as a thumb ring? Can't you wear it on your, like maybe thinking about if you're in love with it, that another finger. You are spot on and it's always a great alternative to put it on another finger. There's no limitation to what finger you wear a ring on anymore. I mean, like you said, a thumb ring, it used to be very traditional. Everybody wore it on their ring finger. There's no such thing. 
wear it on your middle finger, wear it on your pointer finger, wear it on your thumb, wear it on your pinky. I mean, why not? I mean, I love wearing rings on multiple fingers. It's a statement. And it's what we always say about Judith Perfect Jewelry. Make it individualized. Customize it. Give it its own personality. Give it the personality that resonates with who you are and how you like to present yourself. Are you a little edgier? Do you like to be hip? Are you chic? Are you conservative? It has to go with your personality. And I do, and Heidi, I do have all three, so I'm so excited. I had another one. I wasn't sure if I was going to have the size to be able to get it on my finger. This is so gorgeous, and there's something a little delicate and beautiful about this one. The details on this really knock me out. The details on this is what people expect to see on Judith Ripka jewelry. Because you have a basic, classic, prong set center round stone. But once you walk away from that center stone, that's when the beauty of Judith Ripka comes into play. You have this gorgeous halo of the Belle Luce, but if you turn that ring to the side, Amy, Oof. and you look at the basket, that pierced detailing, that estate-like feel, in between the pierced airlines are individually prong set Bella Luce. Then you continue to the shank where you have more prong set Bella Luce running down the shank and Judith's signature angled Berge running throughout it down to the sizing bar. And we put that sizing bar there. So if you're in between sizes, you could bring it to your local jeweler, have them adjust it. But this ring it might be small in scale for Judith Ripka, but it is mighty. It has all of our details packed in there. It's designed 360 degrees, so no matter where you look, there's no unfinished metal. There's no detail left unturned, unfinished. It's a gorgeous ring. And again, in those three incredible, precious gemstone simulants of the ruby, sapphire, and emeralds. And I tried to stack, actually, it with the staff ring that we were looking at before, but it's not my size, so it's kind of <laughs> getting, a little, getting a little crooked and I'm struggling, but there's such <laughs> things. As you were saying, these are limited, but not as limited as the bands were. So the ruby, you have a complete run of sizes, so from size 5 to 11. So you're good there. In the sapphire, it is only available in a size 8, 9, and 11. And in the emeralds, sizes 5 through 8 and 10 through 11. So basically, you're only missing a size 9. The size of the center stone, it's a, a carat 30 for the emeralds, a carat 60 for the ruby, and a carat 70 for the blue sapphire. And it has a carat 65 of Bella Luce. So that's why you have all that sparkle in there. And Heidi, you know, you and I both know if we were to look at this in a Judith Ripka design and these were a mine from the earth situation, we know what that price tag would look like. But here's, I guess, for me, the thing that um, and I've even had hosts of 25 years. I've had people that are, you know, he he's a self-proclaimed gen geek, one of our our hosts here <laughs> and, you know, at it for 35 years. He even said to me, you know, when we first started talking about lab created, he said I was hesitant. I didn't want anything to do with it. And he said, I have to admit that's because I didn't know anything about it and I didn't understand. And when I began to study and understand lab created and the benefits benefits of it. He said, I was sold. So I also recommend to people, if you're ever on the fence, just read more. It has incredible benefits. We're not mining from the earth. It's natural, uh, you know, in sense of if you don't want to mine from the earth gemstone, you want something that's chemically, optically, physically the same as its counterpart. This is the direction to go. Still getting, as we discussed at the top of the show, still getting everything that you want, the color and the beauty. But the great part about it is that you're not getting those imperfections that we come to you know, know uh, that are inherent in so many of these colored gemstones. And as we always say, Heidi, whether it's a flower from a hothouse or you dig it from the earth, is that not a flower? And that's a great way to think about lab-created gemstones. They are chemically, optically, physically the same. Yeah, you're right. And what's interesting is Judith Ripka herself started incorporating these stones in her collection more than 20 years ago. She was using mostly the lab created sapphire and the lab created emeralds. We have an estate collection. Actually, one of the cuffs we're going to look at is uh, inspired by the Couture estate cuff. But so when we were launching our estate collection, and Judith has all these big gemstones in her collection, she couldn't afford to put 
genuine sapphire and gem, genuine emerald in her pieces. And actually, I'm sorry, I take that back. We did use ruby too. Um, and so we started using these lab created gemstones because everybody wanted that genuine look of real. And they were, they were making a significant investment in their 18 karat gold and diamond jewelry, but they weren't willing to go to, you know, $150,000 so that their white gold cuff could have emeralds in it or sapphires. Sure. In it. sure. Or some of the pieces would have probably been even more because of the scale of the gemstones. So this is something that is really part of the Judith Ripka brand DNA for many, many years. It's just become a real hot topic the past, not even decade or so, where people are talking about lab-created gemstones or lab-created diamonds. So this is something that you go way back in our brand. This is something we've always believed in, giving you the ability to have that look of real, but not pay that price, to give you that attainable luxury in your jewelry collection. Judith was way ahead of the curve there, you know, 45 years in the designing and the creation and such beauty in every single thing that she touches. And so it doesn't surprise me she was ahead of the curve on that. But if you're kind of catching up to it right now, you can pick up any very high end bridal magazine or we have a leader in the jewelry industry. It's a magazine that we we have here that sits in the host area. And it's amazing, Heidi, every single page from the most high end pieces to designer looks every page that you turn it, every other page is lab created. So that's where it's going. That's where it's at. And again, for me, there's so many pieces in my life that are completely unattainable. And I've always admired Judith and you and I had known each other in a previous a place and time. Um, so I'm very familiar with Judith, I love and have admired her work for so long. And I love that I can experience that and I can own multiple pieces where before Maybe that wasn't quite as a, you know, the possibility. And I love that for everyone. And I know that also with jewelry television, our goal is to open the doors of, of buying gemstones and jewelry to everyone. And I love that Judith gives everyone an opportunity to, you know, experience that. Yeah. And we do, you know, so it's nice to also have that depth in our collection where we have the genuine precious and semi-precious gemstones. So whatever is your cup of tea. Exactly. If you're more comfortable with something that's mined from the earth, we have that. Yep. But if you want that look of these precious gemstones and your bank account says, uh, you might like it, but you yeah. know, it's not, it's not going to happen. We're giving you that opportunity to invest in yourself, invest in pieces that are something that might be more budget friendly for you. And what I always say is that most people, when they see these lab created gemstones, they're not going to realize nope. that they're not looking at genuine. I'm not saying, you know, you're going to, you know, lie or, you know, try to pass it off. I'm not saying that you have to do that, but I'm saying if you're not sure that you're comfortable with it, no one's going to say, oh, is that real? No one's going to say, oh, is that lab created? They're just going to admire your beautiful ring. And that's yep. the end of it. It's up to you. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. That's right. And I always try to say, to, I, that's one of the lessons I always try to share with people. Just say thank you. That's if right. you're not sure what to say, no one's looking for you to give an explanation. Just that's say right. thank you. I appreciate the compliment. That's thank it. Thank you. I Ooh. love my Judith Ripka. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, this ring that's um, up next is slightly larger in scale. It is a oval you said, do you have that one? I don't think I'm going to have the oval. Mm, gosh, we're so limited. No, I don't have the oval. So we'll, oh my so we'll gosh, you know what? You probably won't because when I'm looking at the sizes now, talk about limited. Yep. Okay. okay, so, okay. Yep. So have this oval gemstone ring. I mean, this gives off such royalty vibes to me, everything about it. So we have it in the lab created sapphire. And I have actually on my finger, the lab created emeralds, the emeralds we have in both the sterling silver and the 14 karat gold plaid, but I'm going to walk you through the sapphire version. So like the round we were just looking at, this one has the beautiful Belle Luce halo. It's a prong set center stone. When you turn to the side, we did a different detail here. These are all textured donuts. Judith is known for all of her different textures. This one has a very fine mill grain. 
And it's almost like little bezels going around the entire basket. You see that? Mm -hmm. And then going down the shank, we emulated it. However, the ones on the shank, we added the Bella Luce. So it's a bezel set Bella Luce. You have all the texture along the side all the fine engraved work going all the way around this ring. And this ring in the sapphire is a 5.13 carat stone. And look at the richness of that blue. It's like mesmerizing how rich that color is. It's got so much life in it. And I love the way the light hits it and it sparkles so much. Really gorgeous ring. It has 63 points of Bella Luce. And now I'm going to show you the emerald one also, so you can get a feel for that. The emerald is 4.30 carats, all the same detail. And it is also available in the 14 karat gold clad. But as you pointed out, because you don't have the sample, Amy, it is incredibly limited in size. So in the blue sapphire set in sterling silver, we only have a size 10 left in this ring. That's it. In the emerald and 14 karat gold clad, we have a size 9 and a size 10. And in the sterling silver with emerald, we have a size 7 and a size 8. And that is it. So incredibly, incredibly limited on this ring. So I'm sorry, Amy, if I had known they weren't going to get you all sampled, I would have reevaluated what we were well, talking about. It's you know not what? Much fun. <laughs> you know what I got though, Heidi, which I'm not, I'm, they're going to have to pry it off of me. I did get to wear this necklace that I'm in love with and <laughs> I know it's not in the show, but I was in love with this. So I did get to wear this. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, because I don't know if you know what you have on your neck there, but I'm going to tell you what a special piece you have there. You do. I knew you would. <laughs> this is a couture-inspired necklace. It's called the Redder Necklace. And it was actually custom-made for one of Judith's cousins. It was a very special piece. And it's basically an elegant leaf design. So you have, like, two leaves off to the side, which I don't know if people could see. Well, maybe when they zoomed in on come in close. Sure. A little bit closer. So... You can see it's a leaf pattern up top. The front has some touches of the Bella Luce. And then underneath the leaves is the bezel set Bella Luce. So it's got a lot of sparkle in the front. It does go to the back where we, we pulled back on some of that Bella Luce. And then you just have textured petals. But the bezel set Bella Luce goes all the way around to the back of your neck. It closes with a signature Judith Rick the Lobster Claw. And I believe that necklace is available in, I want to say, 18 inches. Um, I don't recall for sure. I was going off the top of my head. Um, and so those are attached individually with one link in between. So you see where it's kinking up in your hand a little bit? Mm -hmm, you just mm -hmm. kind of give that a little twist and it'll immediately go into place. Yep, it will sure lay does. just like this, just a little turn. Neck. Just, yeah. Perfect. So as you saw on Amy's neck, it lays perfectly it is one of my all-time favorite necklaces and it is available only on jtv.com this is not going to be presented on air just so everybody's aware and it is very very limited so that inventory on that necklace has been going quickly I loved but this I, one, Heidi. I just felt like it was one, whether you're in a more, I mean, kind of a, you know, could wear it with a pair of blue jeans kind of top. But if I had a dressy occasion or if I wanted to, you know, really amp it up with something, you know, hair up, dressy event, this really takes you to so many places. It's also incredibly comfortable and something that's kind of my measuring stick. If I'm going to you know, have a piece that I want to wear in multiple ways is that it lies beautifully along the clavicle and along the neckline. And this really is one of those that's just like chef's kiss. It just lays perfectly. Uh, and I so appreciate that. So if you're talking and you're moving, you're not going to be messing with this. And I often find pieces that hit you at the clavicle tend to roll around and this doesn't at all. It's gorgeous. You know, and it really, honestly, Amy, it looks so gorgeous on your neck. Like when you came on just before we went live, I, like 
that's like a perfect necklace for you. I mean, really so, so gorgeous. And what's nice is that it actually works back to the pieces that we're wearing, uh, that we're looking at today without being too matchy matchy. And it truly is, as you're saying, that black tie to blue jeans type of style. You really can go from, you know, your office to a special occasion in the evening and it would work for both. You can do everything with it. Just change your hair, change your earring. And there you go from like the more casual to the more up, you know, upscale, elegant evening. And so. I love that we, I love that you shared Judith's story because there's a little bit of Judith in each of these pieces. So that inspiration of the why this necklace and how she designed it and who she designed it for become part of the overall story in your own necklace. Yeah. And, and I love that these pieces live on and don't go out of style. And that's why we always say Judith Ripka jewelry is on trend, but never trendy. Mm -hmm. It is that heirloom quality jewelry that you can have, wear and enjoy forever, and then pass it down. Whether it's your children, your grandchildren, your daughter-in-law, they'll still enjoy it and wear it because it doesn't go out of style. And that's a good barometer when you're investing in jewelry. Is it going to have longevity? And this is that one. Done. Yeah, that's right. I agree. <laughs> so now I have to ask, did they give you the cuff? I do. I have several cuffs. Which one did you want to go to? Well, one of them that you're wearing is a surprise for the end because oh. that is launching in October. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this one you mean that I've had on the whole show? <laughs> we're going to just pretend so, I don't have it on. We're going to give a sneak peek at that one, but it's okay, <laughs> okay. to wear it. Um, the, I'll go the where you're going. <laughs> The, the silver one with mm -hmm. the blue sapphires, if you want to oh, show. That. I sure do. Oh. <laughs> and Judith's anyway. kickstand, I have. I've opened yes. it up beautifully. Our our famous hinge cuff, which yes. is the best kind of bracelet to own, especially if you are on your own, you don't have someone to help you with latching your bracelet. I mean, I break out into a sweat sometimes when I'm trying to put a bracelet on my wrist and it's a little snug sometimes oh, and it yeah. doesn't have a hinge and I'm trying to like loop it into the claw and I'm like, oh my gosh, how, I can't do this without somebody helping me. <laughs> That's why I love these hinge cuffs. It doesn't matter if you're on your own. It just pops right onto your wrist. The hinge closes, it's nice and secure. And this is from our estate collection. And that's what we were talking about earlier. It's derived from Couture and it was in the Judith Rip, the 18 karat gold estate collection that we started introducing the lab created blue sapphire because it is the perfect complement when you think about estate vintage jewelry. I automatically, I don't know about you, I yep. automatically was thinking ruby, sapphire and emerald. Of course. And it just works so perfectly with it. This cuff has all those intricate details, all the gorgeous airlines. I'm going to let you show it actually, because I feel like my picture is blurring out a little bit and I'm sure they, yeah, that's a much better shot. So it has all the airlines with all the delicate mill grain. It has the Belle Luce accents. You have on either side of those Asher cut gemstones, you have the bezel set, the cherry Belle Luce to give it all that sparkle. It has so much, it's like texture rich. Everywhere you look on that piece, there's some rope, there's some angled berger. Even when you look at the side wall of this cuff, it's the 360 degree designing that we always talk about, where you have more of that pierced detail, more of that texture. You have the little cube shape where the stones are. This texture goes all the way around to the back, we just pulled back though on some of the prongs at Belle Luce, giving it a little more durability. So in the back of this cuff, it's all textured with the airlines, nicely finished. And when you take off the cuff and look on the inside, that has our signature back plate, really finishing it off that couture quality that we always talk about, but high, you know, luxury jewelry. You always want to have all your pieces perfectly finished as beautifully on the inside as it is on the outside. And it feels so much better against your skin when it's nicely finished like this. So this is a real classic style. It's available, I believe, in all three sizes. Um, and this one has 95 points of Belle Luce and six carats of the lab created blue sapphire. 
real classic cuff. So and I love that piece. <laughs> Oh, um, and it literally does look like you either, this was either passed down in the family and it's an heirloom, or you were lucky enough to purchase that it's at an auction or an estate sale. It has that look. It's gorgeous. It's even more beautiful in person. It's hard with the studio lights to really capture it. It's intricate. It's detailed. And I would just add, I'd say, Heidi, if any of our shoppers, I know so many are loyal, long-term, decade-long Judith Ripka shoppers. If you're new to, well, what's this Bella Luce you're talking about? And what? So Bella Luce is probably, and I believe is, uh, the most long-term beloved line here at Jewelry Television. So for more than 28 years. So Bella gives us the look of beautiful fine diamonds. We also have Bella Exotica, which gives us the look of exotic gemstones. So you're taking a tried and true, beautiful look of diamond, making it more affordable in that regard. You're getting all the look of Judith and then in a lab created gemstone, which is again, optically, chemically, physically, the exact same as its counterpart. So you're getting all of that in an estate style, beautiful look of a Judith Ripka piece. And I don't know how you do any better than that. You can't do any better than that. I, I, I just love how it sparkles and I love the look of diamonds. So the fact that it's affordable and looks so luxurious and it looks like real genuine diamonds. I mean, why would you mm -hmm. even question it? No one else is going to. So why should you? And I love that Bella Luce estate cuff that you paired it with. It really looks great together. That's another so beauty. It, we are going so far over time here. We still have three styles to look at. So <laughs> I'm going to move us along because I know you have a surprise on your wrist that you want to <laughs> show everybody. But the next item I want to quickly show everybody is a, we have it in ruby and emerald, this beautiful gemstone stud earring. So I'm going to put one on so everyone can see the scale of this. It has the estate detail. It has these, I'm going to see if I can hold it up so you can see it. It has the cherries, like what we were looking at on the cuff in the corners of the stone. So it's Belle Luce cherries. And then it has in between the cherries, cubes with the prong set Belle Luce all flanking the bezel set square cut simulated emerald. And then we also have it in the simulated ruby here. These have a post with an omega back, which helps this earring sit beautifully on your ear. So it's nice and flush. It's in the right position. It's not falling forward in any way. It's a very comfortable earring but it's a classic style. It's a classic silhouette. So if you like having more of a stud earring, this is a great style. It works back to the other pieces we were looking at so far. So if you were looking at the simulated emerald styles or the simulated ruby styles, it's a great earring and it looks fabulous on you, Amy. And I'll tell you a couple of things I would point out if you're not familiar with the post and then the Omega, it is incredibly comfortable. So don't be mistaken if you're thinking of a clip earring. Sometimes with, you know, for me, um, sometimes I feel they're a little tight or a little uncomfortable. These are incredibly comfortable. They sit beautifully, just as Heidi was saying. So they're not going to rotate. They're not going to move. And again, this is that look of an estate piece that's been handed down. It's elegant. It's gorgeous. This one's such a winner, Heidi, every piece in the show, but I hadn't seen an earring quite like this in a really long time. This is gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. It, it's pretty much as close to perfect as you can get in an earring like that, I have to say. And I just want to you know, point out, you were talking about how comfortable it is because some people are concerned when they hear about an Omega back. And so I'm the vice president of design and innovation, but I've spent my career as the vice president of product development for Judith Ripka. I have a manual that's yay thick that I make sure everyone adheres to. And one of the things in there is about the post placement, but more importantly, it's about the Omega placement and where the Omega needs to stop as it relates to the back of the earring. So if you see you hold this on the side, you'll see that there's a gap between where the Omega ends and where the back of the earring starts. That's by design. That is intentional. That gets sent back to them 
if that spacing isn't accurate because then it is uncomfortable. So it goes close enough that it holds it right up to your lobe, but not too far where it would fall forward. It's really important that this is just right for it to sit perfectly on your ear. So I'm glad you said that because otherwise I would have forgotten to even mention that little aspect of how we make our jewelry. Well, I think it's those finer details. You know, I'm familiar with Judith and so many of us are, but joining the, you know, jewelry television family, it's also nice for some of our new shoppers to be familiar. And that's one of the details we come to know and love about Judith is that quality, is that look. And, you know, the comfort, it matters. Comfort matters. So comfort matters. I could tell you that for a fact, because I'm the person that's always struggling with my high heels. I love the look of heels. I'm never comfortable. So if I'm going to struggle with my heels, then I at least have to make sure that all my jewelry is incredibly comfortable so I don't feel like I have that on. That's right. Well, they're beautiful. So two more things left to look at. I'm rushing at this point because I really want everyone to hear about what you have on your other wrist. That's right. So you were wearing these before. These are estate band rings. So these are channel set in the simulated ruby, sapphire, and emerald. And Amy, correct me if I'm wrong. Can I use the word simulated or does it have to be lab created? Lab created. So simulated okay. is it looks like, right? So it's going to look like that gemstone where a lab is optically, chemically, physically the same. And in many cases, you literally have to go in and have it tested. Not at a, uh -huh. you know, first blush, you'll even know. So there's simulated look of, lab created is of. Got it. Thank yeah. you. You bet. I knew I needed an expert here. <laughs> <laughs> not not so, on all Judith. I'm loving it though. I'm learning Judith. <laughs> So these band rings have, as I was saying, they're channel set. They have our little detail on the top and bottom that you could see here, the little beads. We have the, well, they're cherries. And then we have all of our estate engraving going down the side of the shank. So these are stackable. I have them stacked up on my finger here. The sapphire is on the bottom because sapphire seems to be our number one, people love our sapphires and that is very limited in size. But the ruby, the ruby we have in size five to 11 and the emerald we have in five to 11 is just the sapphire that we only have in five, 10 and 11. These are each 75 points of the lab created ruby, sapphire and emeralds. These look great if you wanna pair them with the other rings we were looking at earlier. So for example, we had this round ring earlier, great to stack it together. It's a phenomenal look. I mean, you could get two pairs of the rings or two bands, stack it together, make it like guards. It gives it a really great look. Um, I only have one emerald, so I had to put the ruby, but I love stacking my rings. I'm always playing with my rings and making different looks, different combinations. So not only do I wear them on different fingers, but I will also stack them up together because I like when a ring takes up knuckle to knuckle, I like a big bold ring. These are so detail driven. I mean, the, the details in these, that's the kind of ring you have to get at home to really appreciate the details. And for this to be a band that's loaded with this much intricacy is so impressive. Yeah, I mean, there's no stone unturned literally in that. If you look at it top, back, side, with the exception of that sizing bar in the back, it's all been touched by Judas Design. It covers the entire ring with the exception of that little space for your jeweler if you need to adjust the size a little bit. It is gorgeous. It is so detail rich, elegant, estate-like, really classic. I, and you know, listen, for me, for my money, a band ring all day long, because I know I'm going to wear it. I know I'm going to stack it. I know it's going to look with my big, bold solitaires. I know that I can wear it sometimes across fingers because you're not committed to anything big and bold. I love these. I also love to gift these. I think that a band ring, if you know a ring size, is very e easy to gift, where many other rings are a little bit of a challenge. Um, and even, like you say, in every single angle, every single detail, it's just gorgeous. Yes, it is. And really it's one of, it's, it's like with almost everything in our collection, if you're new to Judith Ripka and you've heard Amy and I say, you know, when you get it home and you see it, it's really true. You could see only so much on these live streams and 
Andrew, who's there with the camera, is doing a great job zooming yeah. in, getting all those details. So thank you, Andrew. But it's when you put <laughs> your hand that you could really study it. You can really see how each piece is perfectly finessed, but it's also the weight of the jewelry. There's a nice weightiness to mm -hmm. Judith Ripka. Nothing ever feels light or tinny. No. Nope. Substantial. You feel the investment that you're making when you wear our product. Those look great. Absolutely beautiful. And I would say order true to size because these are my sizes. They're fitting beautifully. I'm usually a standard size seven. Um, unfortunately, because we're so limited and things have been flying out the door, I did not have my ring sizes and some of the others or I would have slipped those on. I think I have like a size 11 and some of these fit beautifully, have a comfort fit. I love the adjustability. If you did want to take it to your jeweler, if you did want to wear it across a different finger, you can certainly do that with the adjustability on the bar on the back. But just from top to bottom, it's perfection in a band ring. It is. So our last ring that we're going to look at before you can show everybody the cuff on your wrist is my favorite. It's a big, bold estate cocktail ring that you were actually showing at the beginning of the show when we were talking about the lab created stones and you were showing the emerald version. This ring is everything that I love about the Judith Ripka cocktail ring. It's big in scale. Unfortunately, it's big in size for me today, uh, but it's big scale. It's got all the estate detail. We did something a little different for us. We usually have texture on the prongs, but when you look at estate jewelry, a lot of times you'll see the stone held in by multiple high polished prongs. So instead we did a very bold tailored prong on these. So this one has six prongs. So you have two on either side, one top and bottom, beautifully securing this octagon step cut stone. Then you have all the estate detail on the basket, the airlines, the texture, the bell luce. And then when you go off to the side, you'll see more of that continuing. You'll see the bell luce. You'll see the airlines, the airline pattern. And of course it's finished beautifully on the inside. Now these rings, the stones are 11 carats. So it's an 11 carat lab created ruby, an 11 carat lab created emerald. And I do want to say, I'm sorry, on here, this is an emerald simulant nanocrystal. A little different. Uh, they only say it for this one. And then we have a lab created blue sapphire that is also 11 carats. These each have about 90 points of the Bella Luce, and again, limited in size. So in the Sapphire, we have five, six, 10, and 11. We only have an 11 in my favorite emerald. So if you're a size 11, go grab it or it's gone. And then in the Ruby, five, 10, and 11. That is it. And Heidi, and with, I feel like we just can't do it justice unless we come in close on the ones I have in my hand, just because the lighting, of course, in the studio will do it a little bit more justice. These are so believable. And of course, in the lab case, it is, as we've said over and over again, it is its counterpart. Uh, and so in this case, I think you're getting, again, all the details that Heidi walked us through, all the intricacy, all the beauty of that estate look. The band is stunning, but I wanted to tip it down. And as Heidi was saying, you know, this is her favorite colored gemstone. Look at that. As you look into that, it's that hall of mirrors, that step down. It's everything that we look for. The cut is beautiful. Would you ever find something so clean? Imagine what that would cost. I mean, this is a big, bold, gorgeous cocktail look. This is Hollywood. This is like old Hollywood. It is. It truly is. And I am so upset because honestly, I usually try to get myself at least like one of everything because I love wearing our jewelry all the time. And now I can't get it. It's not available in my size. And I never got this one. And I love it. It's just such a gorgeous ring. It's such a pretty style. It's timeless. It's it's just uh, unbelievable, this with, style. So with Ju like with Judith designing a ring like this, does she go back to the archives? Is this like for inspiration or just kind of sprinkles in some of those details we know and love, like a bold look like this? Anything you can so, share about it? Yeah. I can actually. So with Judith, basically her inspiration is always, I just really, oh, I put on the wrong earring. I meant to put my earring back on. With <laughs> Judith, 
she does a lot of um, research with Christie's and Sotheby's catalog. She's always combing, looking for a state product, looking at all the details, looking at the different setting styles, looking at the different, you know, mill grain texture is something that we use, but that is an estate detail. Um, looking at all the different patterns. There were so many intricate patterns back then. And she's always incorporated them in different ways into the brand. And it's so funny. Um, so I joined the company in 1995. It was pre-computers. <laughs> I mean, the internet was still in its like infancy for most of us. That was like when AOL was coming. Yeah. My my big first so, big girl job in Chicago. <laughs> right? We had one oh, assistant so. and we all shared and <laughs> we hand wrote yeah, it. We, we didn't even have a computer when I joined. Yeah, I see there. And so <laughs> one of my first tasks that she gave me is she sent me to the New York City Library on Fifth Avenue and 42nd Street wow. and had me go and photocopy from like all these like old, I don't even remember the books, but they were like vintage jewelry books that you, you know, go into the card catalog, do a decimal system. And I was like researching all this vintage jewelry and taking photocopies for her for inspiration. And she's always looked back and reflected on true vintage jewelry to help her have inspiration in addition to art and architecture and nature, because a lot of those inspirations come up with the first idea. And then it's the little nuances that she really learned from some of the great masters from a hundred years ago, from, you know, decades, from looking at the art deco era. She studied all of it and really has applied it over the years to her collection. Thanks for it sharing does. that. I always love that's what, you know, we get an attachment to our jewelry because it is a story. It becomes a story and part of our lives. And I love when you share, um, you know, and I know so many people ask every week, how's Judith doing? And you said she's doing great and enjoying uh, semi-retirement, right? We never really retire. <laughs> right. No. And Judith and I, we, we speak really regularly and yeah. it's almost impossible for us not to get on the topic of jewelry. Yes. Not so much business, but because we both love it so much, it's just what we talk about. Sure. A special stone, if there was an exhibit, it's just we can't we can't stop ourselves. So in she might be <laughs> she's never really in retirement, not when she's on the phone with me. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's all good. We love it though. It's we'll send her our it's, love. <laughs> yeah. So I want you to share with everybody that gorgeous <laughs> iconic. Pia cuff that you have on your wrist Ugh. that we are bringing back from the archives for our October launch. When I saw that piece, I was like, oh, oh so happy that we are bringing that back because so many women love that piece. And quite a few have said, I didn't get a chance to buy it. I want it now and I need to have it. And I was like, done. We need to include this in our launch. I, could you believe the weight of that piece? I, I'm knocked out. You're going to be so thrilled with this. It's that perfect balance between not being too heavy on your wrist, but being substantial and weighty enough that you say, ah, this is quality. Yes, it is quality. And we will do the full walkthrough of it in October. So just as a reminder to everybody, the official Judith Ripka broadcast launch will be October 18th. I believe the show is from six to eight. Then our very big launch on Thursday, October 19th from eight to 10 PM. It's going to be in conjunction with the JTV 30th anniversary cocktail party. And then we'll have our third show on Friday, October 20th. And I believe that one is from two to four. We'll be posting the exact times shortly, but mark your calendars. It's about those dates and times. Well, we're going to be cocktail worthy with all our gorgeous, gorgeous Judith. I have to decide what I want for the cocktail event. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> a lot of exciting this. coming our way. Yeah, everybody is. It's a good one. And it looks great with the necklace, Amy. I don't know. I see, see something happening. See you guys happening. later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I won't get past security, but I'll try. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm I know fast. somebody. <laughs> um, Amy, thank you again for spending tonight with me. I really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you to everybody else that joined us tonight for the Ripka edit. And don't forget next Wednesday, it is October already. That means I'll be with Albany Urban and we'll be doing Judas Jewelry Box. So hope you'll tune in and see us then. And Amy, I'll be seeing you soon. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye.